The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States, and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Among the many life insurance plans offered by our sponsor, the Equitable Life Assurance Society, one is of particular interest to homeowners. This plan combines a money-saving mortgage with life insurance security, all in one package. For further information on this Equitable Society Assured Home Ownership Plan, listen carefully to the middle commercial in about 14 minutes. Tonight's FBI file, The Fugitive Traveler. There are more than 5,000 crimes committed in the United States every day. When you pause to think about that fact, your mind conjures up the dark streets of a big city late at night. But the experience of your FBI in dealing with crimes in every one of the 48 states is that crimes don't happen because of geography, but because of people. Crimes are being committed tonight in crowded tenement slums and in peaceful moonlit valleys because there is a criminal president in each case. It is true that there are more crimes committed in big cities, but no section of the nation is so remote that it remains isolated from the crime wave. Tonight's FBI file opens in a farmhouse located in a hilly section of one of our eastern states. It is early evening. A young girl is seated alone on the back steps of this hillside dwelling. In a valley below, a passenger train moves swiftly through the dusk. The girl watches the train, her eyes follow it intently. Ned! Ned! What? Oh. What is it, Aunt Bessie? I've been calling you for the last five minutes. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Did you bring in some wood? Yes, ma'am. Did you feed the chickens? Yes. Did you bring in the eggs? I, I think I did. Well, where are they? Uh, didn't I put them on the kitchen table? No. Oh, I, I must have left them in the barn. In the barn? Why? I just forgot them, I guess. Well, go get them. Oh, Aunt Bessie, please, not right now. Just let me wait till the train goes around the hill. Oh, good heavens, child. When will you stop this foolish nonsense? Mooning over trains, mooning over books, mooning over going to far-off places. I'll get the eggs. If you'd just give a little more thought once in a while to the fact that I'm an old woman trying to run this farm all by myself, and at least that a strong young girl like yourself... I'm getting them, Aunt Bessie. Well, try and remember to bring them right back in the house. We still have to do the dishes and the icebox. Need cleaning. I know. Trains. Mister. <coughs> Mister. <coughs> Who are you? Who are you? Never mind. <coughs> Look at your arm, it's bleeding. <coughs> yeah. Let me go in the house. Uh, boys. Oh. Who else is in that house? My aunt. Is that all? Yes, just the two of us. How did you get here? Where, where did you come from? I fell off a train, a freight train. Oh. That's how you were hurt? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I see. Look, I just want to rest a while and I'll get out of here. But you're bleeding so you need a doctor. I'll find my own doctor. Did you come from far away? What's that to you? I just wondered. Ned? <gasps> Ned? Who is that? My aunt, I've got to go. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Do me a favor, a big favor. Don't don't tell her I'm here. Why? 
Just do me that favor, please. All right. I'll come back later. Some 50 miles away from the lonely farmhouse in a nearby city at the local FBI field office, Special Agent Jim Taylor is approaching the desk of the agent in charge. You wanted to see me, Mr. Henderson? Yes, Jim, come in. All right, sir. Jim, you're about finished with the Brooks case, aren't you? Yes, I dictated my full report this morning. Good. We just received a teletype that you can go to work on. Oh, what's it about? Criminal named Ralph, alias Rip Gibson, was being transported here from the penitentiary to testify at a federal trial. Yes. He was traveling by train, had an armed guard with him. I see. While en route, he requested to go to the washroom. The guard consented. Once he was in there, Gibson smashed the washroom window and jumped off. While the train was in motion? Yes. Well, when did the guard discover this? Almost immediately. He heard the glass crash and rushed to the train platform, saw Gibson rolling down the embankment. Fired at him, believes he wounded him. But Gibson still got away. Yes. When did all this happen, sir? Several hours ago. Any trace of him since? No. The train was stopped, searching party was organized. But Gibson must have found some means of transportation that took him out of the immediate neighborhood. Well, if the guard did wound him, and it's serious enough, he'll most likely be needing medical attention, and so... We've already notified all doctors in the escape area. Local police are cooperating, too. Oh, good. I want you to stand by, Jim. All right. As soon as we get a definite lead, we'll go to work. Hello. Hello. How's your arm? Okay, I guess. I brought some bandage, some water. Maybe you'd like me to take care of it. Go ahead. I'd have been out sooner, but I had to wait till my aunt went to bed. Didn't tell her about me? No. I've got to rip your shirt sleeve. It may hurt a little. It's all right. I won't mind. Are you... Sorry. Okay. Now let me bathe it. Yeah, sure. I've got to get the wound clean first. The bullet went right through, didn't it? What bullet? The one the guard fired at you. What are you talking about? I know who you are. What is this? I just heard the report on the radio. Your name is Gibson, Rip Gibson. You escaped from your guard, jumped from a moving train. He shot at Look, you. Look, I don't know what you're talking about. They gave you a description. Now, just lift your shoulder a little. Did your aunt hear this report? No. Did you tell anybody else? No. Please lift your shoulder. Okay. That's fine. Now I can put the bandage on. Look, Miss... Uh... Nan. Nan Carroll. Nan. Why didn't you blow a whistle? What do you mean? Why don't you call the cops? Let them know I'm here. Doesn't matter. I want to know. I know what it's like to be caged. To not be able to get away, be free. I've spent my whole life right here. Oh. Anyone who can escape from anything, I envy. I get it. That's the best I can do with the bandage. Well, thanks. I better go now. There's some milk and cheese that I brought out. I'll bring you a real meal in the morning. Swell. Good night. Good night. Well, Mr. Henderson. Yes, what is it, Jim? If you've got the time, sir, I'd like to have you give a report on Ralph Gibson. Let's have it. All right. Well, two hours ago, we received word from a witness who saw a man answering to Gibson's description hop a freight train about half a mile from the point where he jumped. I see. This witness was a railroad employee. He said the train was a westbound freight. Its destination was a point about 50 miles down the line, Centerville, to be exact. This was two hours ago? That's right, sir. The train should be there by now. Yes, I know. I've already contacted the yards. Some railroad detectives are going to search the train for me. Good. We have no guarantee, of course, that he didn't jump off somewhere en route. I uh, know. Excuse me. Sure. Anderson speaking. Yeah, just a minute. It's for you, Jim. Oh, there you are. Thanks. Hello. Yes. Oh, hello there. Really? Well, did you... Did you pick up any other clues? Hmm. 
Yeah, I see. Well, thanks a lot. All right. Goodbye. That was the Centerville Railroad Police. What did they have? A coat that they positively identified as belonging to Gibson was found in one of the freight cars. But no sign of him? No, they feel he jumped off somewhere en route. Oh, by the way, there was a bullet hole in the coat and it was quite heavily stained with blood, so he was wounded. Uh, Jim, I suggest that you alert the local police all along that 50-mile route. Right, sir. Then arrange for a crew to cover the tracks. See if you can pick up any evidence on where he jumped off that freight. <laughs> Yes, Aunt Bessie. Where have you been all morning? I, I just went out a half hour ago. Well, where did you go? I took a walk. Well, what were you doing in the barn? The barn? I just saw you coming out of there. I was putting away some tools. Oh. I think I'll go Wait up a to... minute. What? That plate in your hand, that's my best china. What were you doing with it? I just picked it up. You had it in your hand when you came in. Well, if you must know, I used it to feed the chickens. My best china? I'm sorry, Aunt Bessie. Wait. Huh? What's that all over your apron? Where? Right there. Looks like blood. Oh. It is blood. I cut my finger. Let me see it. Please, Aunt Bessie, leave me alone. Now, just a minute, young lady. But there's no point in making a fuss over just a little cut. I'm going to go upstairs and fix it right now. <laughs> Here. Oh, you were able to move. Yeah. I thought you weren't coming back till later. Something's happened. What? It's my aunt. She knows I'm here? No, but she saw me come from the barn before, and she saw the plate and some blood stains on my apron. Uh, I didn't know how to handle it. That's why I came here. What should I do? Let me think. I won't let her come into the barn. I promise you that. Uh-huh. Even if she wants wait to... Wait a minute, I'm wait not... a minute. Tell me something about her, will you? What? She got a car? Yes. Is it around here now? Yes. How's she fixed? I don't know what you mean. Has she got dough, money? Well, she has a bank account, yes. Oh. How much are you keeping it? I don't know for sure. Well, about how much? Well, the last time she gave me her bank book to take into town, there was $800. Jeez, huh? That ain't too bad. Why do you want to know all this? Well, I'll tell you, honey. I feel sorry for you. Real sorry, see? A kid like you should get a chance to live big. Yes? I'm going to give you that chance. How? By taking you away from here. Oh. Oh, Of course, we're going to need some cash and a car. That's got to get from your aunt. Oh, she'd never help us. I'm sure she wouldn't. Honey, she won't have much to say about it. Huh? We're taking. Oh, I, I, I couldn't do that. Look, you told me last night you've been spending your whole life in a cage. This is your chance, baby, your chance to bust out. I know, I know. If you don't take it, you'll spend the rest of your life in this trap. You can sit here watching trains. Wait. Huh? Look out the window. My aunt's coming. Come in here? Yes. I'll stall her. Keep her out. Hold it. But she's... Got... Let her come in. What? Let her come in. I'll let her find out what it feels like to be caged. Tonight's case from the official FBI files will be reopened in just a moment. Where Claire and I have lived together all these happy years. Where Sonny took his first steps. The place in all the world we love the best. If that's the way you feel about your home, then it's time you knew about the Equitable Society's Assured Home Ownership Plan. It's a money saver, it's a home saver. It's America's finest plan for home ownership. A money saver, you say? That's right. Just listen to these four advantages of the Equitable Society's Assured Home Ownership Plan. First, if the owner dies, the Equitable Society cancels the mortgage. It's paid off in full. What's more, every dollar previously paid on principal is returned to the widow along with the canceled mortgage. Second, 
Mortgage interest is only 4%, and there is a liberal allowance to help cover title search, lawyer's fees, and other closing costs. Third, during the owner's lifetime, a special cash fund is built up in this plan, ready for use if sickness or unemployment threaten home security. Fourth, as your mortgage shrinks, the cash fund increases. You can use it to pay off a 20-year mortgage, for example, in approximately 14 years. Well, that sounds good to me, paying off my mortgage in 14 years with that cash fund. Yes, you might be very glad by then to get rid of further payments. All in all, a man is mighty lucky if his health, age, income, and the location of his home qualify him for an equitable, assured home ownership plan. Well, how can I find out if I qualify, Mr. Keating? Ask your Equitable Society representative. Get full information on the plan that protects you against the two major hazards of home mortgages, death and hard times. Look in the phone book or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Fugitive Traveler. Tonight's case in the files of your FBI points up two important morals. Important because they concern you. The first is that wherever you are, however hidden your shelter may be, the crime wave in this country is your problem because it is a wave that may wash up on your shore at any time. The second moral, and one which your FBI cannot impress upon you too strongly, is that you, the decent citizen, should have nothing whatever to do with any criminal. You do not help him by condoning his crime. Instead, you only endanger yourself and become an accessory to his crime. When you come in contact with a criminal, your duty is clear. You should do one thing and one thing only. Notify your local police. Tonight's file continues at the FBI field office. Special Agent Jim Taylor is just reporting to the agent in charge. Oh, Mr. Anderson. Yes, Jim. Sending out that crew to cover the railroad tracks has brought results. Really? What happened? They're pretty certain they've located the exact spot where Gibson left the freight train. Good. It's about 25 miles east of Centerville, near a community called Ridgewood. Well, I know Ridgewood. I have a good sheriff up there. His name's uh, uh, Morgan. Yes, that's right, sir. I just talked to him. Oh, fine. The track crew called him in on the case as soon as they established where Gibson had jumped. He's taking over right now. I think you'd better get right down there, Jim. All right, sir. Get Morgan to work with you. I'm sure he'll be helpful. Good. I'll let you have a report, sir, as soon as anything breaks. <laughs> Nan? Yes. How's your aunt? I just brought her some soup. You didn't untie it? No. She was awful mad at me. Well, she's lucky we brought her in the house. She could still be tied up in that barn. How do you feel? Yeah, I'm okay. Did the walk in from the barn tire you? No, no, I'm doing fine. Rip? Hmm? When do we leave here? Just figuring that now. Look, what about this bank account? My aunt? Yeah. What is it? Savings or checking? She writes checks. Would the bank take your signature? Oh, no. We've got to get her to sign one. Rip, I wish we could just leave here and forget about the money. Are you kidding? You wouldn't get as far as that next corner. Well, she'll never sign a check for you. I know she won't. Where's the checkbook? Over there in her sewing basket. Bring it here. I'll get her to sign. <laughs> Sheriff Morgan? That's right. Hello, I'm Jim Taylor. Oh, how do you do, Jim? Glad to know you. Any word on Gibson, sir? Nothing yet, I'm afraid. We have a number of searching parties out looking for him. Oh, I see. Our bad break was that it rained last night. How do you mean? Well, as you know, Gibson's presence in this territory was established by that railroad crew who found bloodstains leading down that embankment. Yes. When I got out there, I picked up Gibson's trail. I followed it to a stream about 100 yards away. It's a shallow stream. Gibson waded into it. Obviously, to avoid detection. Right. Just at that point, the rain started. Hmm. We worked both sides of the stream up and down for several miles, 
But we weren't able to find any trace of where he came out. The rain, of course, had washed it away. Oh, I see. Oh, Sheriff, could you determine if he was bleeding much? I think he lost quite a good deal of blood. Well, then he couldn't have gotten very far. I know. I've set up a house-to-house -house search for him. Oh, I'd like to join you in that, if I may. You certainly can. Did you uh, drive down here? Yes. Well, we'll divide up our assignment. I'll give you half a dozen farmhouses all on one row. Okay. You'll have no trouble finding them. Fine. Let's have that list, and I'll get started. Well, she signed a check. But was there any trouble? Of course not. She was very happy to do it. That's not true. You, you didn't hurt her. I didn't have to. What time is it? Almost one o'clock. This bank stay open till three? I think so. All right. You better get into town and cash us. How much is it for? Five hundred. Dollars? What else? Keep going. Rip, I don't think they'd give me that much money. Look, look. You've got a check here with your aunt's signature on it. Tell them that she sent you in for the dough. Tell them she needs it to, uh, oh, to take a trip. Yes, but I... They know you at the bank, don't they? Yes. All right, then get it. Rip. Get rid of whoever it is. I'll hide it here. Hello. Yes? Are you Miss Carroll? That's right. My name is Taylor. I'm a special agent of the FBI. Yes? Here are my credentials. What do you want here? Well, I don't wish to alarm you, but we have every reason to believe there's rather a dangerous criminal at large somewhere in this vicinity. Oh, have you seen any strangers around your place in the past 24 hours? No, sir. Mm -hmm. well, I have the man's picture here. I'd like to have you look at it, please. All right. How will you try to remember him? And if you should see anyone resembling this man, get in touch with your sheriff at once. I will. I understand you live here with your aunt. That's right, but she's upstairs taking a nap. Oh, I see. Well, just pass this information on to her, too, will you? Yes, sir. Thank you. Oh, uh... By the way, would you mind if I took a look around in your bar? No, go ahead. Thanks again. Goodbye, Miss Carroll. Goodbye. Rip, he was from the FBI. Yeah, I know. I heard the whole thing. He's gone to the barn. He won't find anything. I cleaned up around where I'd been. Oh. Now, look, you wait long enough for him to pull away from here. Then get into town and cash that check. <laughs> Well, Jim, how'd you make out? I didn't get a thing, Sheriff. I drew a blank, too. Look, I'll tell you what. I'll review all the calls I made and see if by any chance I missed a farmhouse. Go ahead. Well, my first call was a family named Pastor, a man and wife. Right. Did you have any trouble getting in? No, I... Well, they're uh, not usually very sociable as strangers. Uh, they were very cooperative. Good. My second call was a man named Stewart. Old Pop Stewart. <laughs> you have to shout at him, I bet. <laughs> he seemed pretty deaf. He is. My third stop was at the Carroll farmhouse. Who'd you talk to, Nan or Aunt Bessie? The girl, Nan. Her aunt was taking a nap. Probably just as well. Aunt Bessie's a man-hater. Oh? She won't have one around the place. Wait a minute. Not even a hired hand? No, sir. Hasn't been a man around there in years. Sheriff, I think we ought to go back to the Carroll place. <laughs> Right here. Oh. I stayed behind the door just in case. Well, how'd you make out? They cashed the check. Good, baby. Let's have the dough. Just a minute. Here. <laughs> okay. Small bills. That's good. Uh, where's the car? Out back. Right. Give me the keys. Are we leaving right now? Let's have the keys. Don't you think we should do something about my aunt first? We just can't leave her tied up. Honey, will you give me those keys? Sure. Here. I'll go get my bag. Wait. What? I've changed the schedule. What do you mean? You'll stay here. Oh, no. You heard me. But everything we planned, the reason I did all this was to get away. You've got to take me with you, Rip. No dice. You promised. Look, sweetheart, you're better off here. I don't want to stay here. I want to go with you. Oh. Honey, I might as well tell you right now. Going away with me was strictly a routine. What? 
What would I do with you? All the things you said we'd do together. The places you'd take me. The clothes I'd get. Baby, did you ever look at yourself in the mirror? What do you mean? Guys just don't go any place with an ug like you. Oh. I'm getting out of here. No, wait. Let go. You can't leave me here. You can't. Let go, I said. No, no. Don't change. <laughs> you just stay put. Hello, Gibson. Huh? You saved us the trouble of coming in for you. Uh, who are you? A special agent of the FBI. What? I was just showing the sheriff here why I came back to this farmhouse. Your footprints there in the mud. Hmm? Now I think we should arrange to put you back behind bars. Ralph Gibson was returned to prison after being given an additional 20-year sentence in a state court for his brutal assault on the elderly farm woman. And thus, another criminal was brought back after escape by your FBI and a lurkle local policeman. Another instance in which local authorities lent a very important hand to the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Your FBI has stated before and wishes to repeat that it owes a great debt of gratitude to local police departments all over the nation for the cooperation it has received from those departments. And on this official broadcast, it wishes publicly to thank every local law enforcement agency in the United States. In just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. You say my equitable society representative is the man who'll tell me if I can qualify for an assured home ownership plan, Mr. Keating? That's right, Joe. And don't forget, you get a lot of good things in that plan. A mortgage that's paid in full if the owner dies. If not, a cash fund to be used in financial emergencies. And mortgage interest at only 4%. No wonder it's called America's finest plan for home ownership. So don't delay. See your equitable representative soon. Or write to the Equitable Society, care of this station. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Curious Cameraman. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. Your narrator was Dean Carlton, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at the same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Curious Cameraman on This Is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.